Hello, I'm Rajiv. I work at PR3 Systems, an IT firm based out of Aurora, Illinois, specializing in providing consulting, training, and reselling IBM information management software. A couple of weeks earlier, I received a call from a dear client of mine. He needed some help with some quality state jobs. He had looked at the manuals, but he was still not able to get the job working. I set up a go-to meeting session with him and I walked him through the process and finally got the job working. He was very relieved and very happy. After that incident, I started thinking. If my client, who is highly experienced and very smart, had so much difficulty trying to design a complex quality state job using the product manuals, how much more difficult would it be for someone who is absolutely new to the product? My clients can call me and take my help. But what about the many people who do not have someone to call and get guidance? I decided to do something about it. I decided to create videos to guide others to use data stage quality stage and other IBM products at their own pace. As soon as I decided, I had 100 reasons telling me why I can't do that. You have tons of work, where will you find the time? What qualification do you have to teach others? But then, a part of me responded, if not me, then who? I've spent the last 12 years of my life teaching and consulting on data stage and quality stage to more than 4,000 students, almost in every city in the US. I've worked with more than 40 clients, including Walgreens, McDonald's, Wells Fargo, and many more. And I've helped them to implement IBM information management solution within the organization. This brings us to an incident that happened five years ago. I was invited by a client to perform an assessment of their data integration infrastructure. As I was carrying out the assessment of their architecture, I was amazed by the elegance and the strength of their architectural design. I was curious about the architect and I asked who the architect was, who designed this awesome data integration architecture. I was given a name. When I heard the name, I was shocked. And then immediately I was filled with pride because that architect was one of my past students. His amazing success was the best reward that I could ever receive for my job as a data stage instructor. That moving experience inspired me to be on a mission to spread the knowledge so that our students can become the best architects and create a network of excellence in architectural design and execution. So, I have decided to start by creating three free educational videos. If these videos are liked and found useful by the viewers, I would continue creating more educational content. If they are not liked and not found useful, then I will stop. Hence, the future of these videos depends upon you. If you like it, please let us know. If you don't like it, please let me know. If you'd like to receive these free videos, please provide your name and email address in the space provided below. And I will send you the link to the future videos. Now let us get into the details of the video today. Today, we'll be talking about the usage of unstructured data stage within the data stage parallel canvas. After viewing the video, if you would like to receive more educational videos, please give your email address. And also, I would like to know what additional topics would be of interest for you. And since I'm committed to give you the best experience and the best education in this field, please let us know how can we make our videos more effective and more useful for you. Thank you and I hope to see you soon. In this section, we'll be talking about how to read unstructured data in data stage. What exactly is unstructured data? Unstructured data is any information that does not have predefined data model. Any kind of information that does not fit into any kind of a relational table. It could be text from books, journals, 
metadata, audio, video, web pages, body of word processor, documents, etc. All of these are unstructured data. So to read unstructured data, we use the unstructured data stage. Now the unstructured data stage currently captures only Excel files. So you can read and write to Excel sheets using the unstructured data stage. So you can read from Excel 97 to 2003 that Excelus kind of documents. And you can also read or write to Excel 2007 to 2010, which is Excelus X documents. It is also able to read password encrypted files. As of now, it does not support Excel files that are created on Mac. So whenever you are reading from an Excel file, you need to specify the range. You need to specify the start row or the entire data range. So when you're choosing the option of just giving the start row, the engine just reads the data and then realizes where, where the data actually ends. When you give the entire data, data range, it reads in the exact value that you pass in for the range. And that is the space that it uses to read the data. And you also have the option of using the column header. So if your first row of the Excel sheet has got column names, you can choose that option column header to be set to first row of data ranges. And that gives you the column names for the data. So this is a screenshot of the Excel files or the unstructured data stage. Uh, we'll be showing you a demo that will tell you exactly how to use the Excel file stage. So don't worry if it's not very clear. But as a snapshot, as you can see that the file name is given on the left hand side. You can actually also have a password that if your file is password protected, you can give the password name. And on the right hand side gives you all the metadata and the cell information that it is given in the Excel file. And that is what gets used to read the data from the Excel file. So what kind of data can be extracted from an Excel file? Many times people ask me, hey, why do you need a sep separate Excel stage? Can't I just export the Excel data to a CSV and I can just read CSV using a sequential file stage? Why do we need a separate unstructured data stage? The reason why you need unstructured data stage to read Excel file, because there are a lot of other properties which are there in the Excel sheet that cannot be captured in a comma separated file. For example, your uh, document properties like authors, document comments, content creation, all of that is stored within the Excel document that can be extracted. Similarly, uh, there are hidden flags and uh, cell comments, all of that cannot be captured in a sequential file. And that is why an Excel driver is very, very important and it can really be used very effectively to read from an Excel file. What you could also use is job parameters. So whenever you are using unstructured data stage, it does not have the ability to create new job parameters within the stage. But if you have created a parameter within the job, those parameters can be used within the configuration window within the stage. So just as what you use in any other job or any other stage, you could use the parameter name as pound, parameter name pound. So for example, if my parameter name is file name, I can use the parameter file name as pound, file name pound within my stage. Similarly, I can also write to an Excel file. I can just give the full path name and it writes as an XLX. SX document. You can also write to multiple Excel files by giving the location where the files have to be created and by giving a prefix for the file names. If I have to write to multiple Excel files, first of all, why should we write to multiple Excel files? So typically in one Excel file, you cannot write more than 1048576, so 1,048,576 records. So it's, you might have to write to multiple 
Excel files to capture all of the, the data. And also, many times if you write to a large Excel file, when you read that Excel file, it uses a ton of memory. So it's always a good idea to write to multiple Excel files. So you can write to multiple Excel files in the target stage and you can specify the names and of the order uh, of exactly how to write it. So we'll be seeing a demo how to read Excel files and that would give you enough clarity also to write to Excel files. Hi, my name is Siva Patnala from PR3 Systems and today we're going to be using data stage to play with the unstructured data stage. So for the unstructured data stage, this is the file that we're going to be using. It's an Excel file and we have a few things going on in this Excel file. It's about technology sales and over here we have all the quarters and then we have the units and sales for each different technology that has been sold and over here we see we have totals and another important thing is we have comments over here and that's going to be important because I'll show you guys how to play with that in data stage as well let's go back into the designer now so now how do we get data stage to read this file there's two different ways we can make the excel file a csv file or we can use the unstructured data stage. Now, the reason why the unstructured data stage is superior is because you can get a lot more information from your Excel file. You can get a lot of different metadata, a lot of different properties that you wouldn't be able to get with the CSV file. So let's start that out. Let's go into the unstructured data stage, right click it and go to properties. So once we're in properties, we're going to want to click configure. Since now we're here, we're going to want to specify the file name, which the Excel file is stored. And we can also, if our Excel file is password protected, there is a way that we can enter in the password and data stage will automatically open it for us. And now here is where we have a few options in the range. So we can either specify the start row and it'll read all the other rows until there's no more data left or we could specify the entire data range or we can parameterize. For this demo we're going to specify the entire data range. So here's the range expression. Let's quickly go back into the Excel spreadsheet so that we can see our, what range we want. So for this demo let's get everything from A five all the way to J9. So now we can also specify sheet names to skip but we're not going to do that so we're going to leave that empty. And now column header, this is important. So when we specified our range our columns do have headers so we want to put that as first row of date ranges. If we don't have any column headers, we can leave that as none. So now we're going to press load to get all the metadata in here. There we go. We have everything that's loaded up and there are 10 columns. And we could also see the cell value of the first row. So we want to import all of this into our maps, which are over here. So we're going to click import. So now we have all of that and here is where the unstructured stage really shines. When you go into properties you can get a lot more metadata. So for now we'll just put in Arthur's as an extra thing. And now we can remember how I showed you guys there were comments. We can also load those up. So this was in column 10. And over here, now we can specify what we want. We can either get the comments or comment Arthur. And there's a whole bunch of options. And what I think is really cool is you can also get the formulas, hyperlinks, things of that nature. So let's click comment and let's click OK. And now we can also exit out of the properties of the unstructured data stage. So now 
We're going to want to spec specify a fat path for the data for the data set. I already specified my path. You guys should do that now. And now we're going to want to click OK. And now let's compile and run the job. So it's compiled with no errors. That's a good sign. Now let's run it. Okay, looks like we got four rows. Let's check out the data to make sure everything came out properly. Okay, there we go. Everything looks out to come out properly. We have all four quarters. We have the units and the sales. And we can also see that we have the different authors and comments. So that was how to use the unstructured data stage. I hope you guys enjoyed this demo and I hope you guys learned a little bit as well. Thank you.